leaving Earth to find new homes in space is an old dream of humanity, and will sooner or later be necessary for our survival. The planet that gets the most attention is Mars, a small, toxic, and energy-poor planet that just about seems good enough for a colony of depressed humans huddled in underground cities. But what if we think bigger? What if we take Venice, one of the most hostile and deadly places in the solar system, and turn it into a colony? Not by building lofty cloud cities, but by creating a proper second Earth it might be easier than you think venice is by far the hottest planet in the solar system with a surface temperature of four hundred sixty hot enough to melt lead this heat is due to the most extreme greenhouse effect in the solar system katu is great at trapping heat even a rise from zero point three to zero point four in earth's atmosphere is heating up our planet right now. Venice, atmosphere is 97 katu. Also, Venice, atmosphere, is 93 times denser than Earth's. Standing on Venice, surface would feel like taking a dive about 900 meters deep into the ocean. The pressure would kill you instantly. It's a truly horrible place. So why should we even bother? First and foremost, Venice is almost as big as Earth and has 90 of its surface gravity. Surface gravity is a big problem when colonizing the solar system because it's a very likely that long stays in low gravity places will have negative health effects. Venice, size means, it could be the second largest habitat in the solar system. A new home for billions of humans and trillions of animals with oceans, lush forests, and a beautiful blue sky. A properly terraformed Venice may be the most pleasant place to live outside of Earth. While we can't exactly terraform Venice today, a slightly more ambitious future version of us could take this project on. It will take a few generations to complete and be a huge challenge like building the great pyramids was for our ancestors but then it's not like humans have never started projects that took more than a lifetime to complete okay let's do it to so low low so let it see before anything else we need to cool venice down and remove the gas that makes up the extremely heavy atmosphere as mentioned there's a lot of it. Around 465 million billion tons. How do we do that? There are a few options. We could create giant solar collectors powering huge array of laser beams that heat up the atmosphere so much that it's sublasted into space. Although we would need thousands of times the entire power generating capacity of humanity, and it would still take thousands of years to remove the atmosphere. Another way is to sequester the atmosphere, binding the kato in different compounds through chemical reactions. We could mine elements like calcium or magnesium on Mercury and shoot them at Venice via mass, driver systems, electric rails that make rockets unnecessary on smaller planets. The metals would combine to bind the kato into different carbonates basically forever but the scale makes the whole thing impractical. We would need several hundred billion tons of material to sequester the kato this way. Seems like a waste of material and might take too long. An equally ridiculous idea that could actually work is to put Venice in the shade, literally, by constructing a huge mirror to blot out the sun to just freeze the atmosphere. The mirror dough is to be complex or massive, just a very thin foil with a little structural support. Building such a large flat surface so, so, oh, such a large,
Close to the sun will turn it effectively into a solar sail and push it out of position. So instead of one giant circular object, our mirror will consist of many different pieces. Annular slats of angled mirrors can reflect sunlight from one set of mirrors to the next. Mirrors would be angled, reflecting light from one to another until the light is redirected to the back balancing the force on the front and holding them in position. After a few years of getting the infrastructure in place, things start slowly and then escalate. For the first few decades, the atmosphere slowly cools down but stays dense and deadly until, after some 60 years, it reaches the critical temperature of 31 degrees Celsius. Suddenly, the great flood begins on Venice. As Katu turns to liquid at this pressure and begins to rain down, a constant global rainstorm of unbelievable proportions lasting 30 years, the pressure and temperature suddenly begin to drop in unison. For almost a century, puddles turn into lakes and oceans. The surface temperature is now minus 56 degrees Celsius and the pressure has dropped to only seven times the pressure on Earth. Finally, at a really unpleasant minus 81 degrees Celsius, the Kahu oceans begin to freeze and the rain turns into snow. This leaves us with a frozen Venice covered in oceans as hard as rock and gigantic Kahu glaciers. What remains of the atmosphere is mostly nitrogen at about three times Earth's surface pressure. If you don't mind freezing and suffocating, you can now take stroll over Venice's surface. But the frozen Katwa remains a bit of a problem. At some point, we want to warm up the planet, but if we do, the Katwa ice will melt and fill up the atmosphere again. So we need some way to keep it from doing that. One is to simply cover it all with cheap plastic insulation and cover it up with ground-up Venice rock or water oceans. Although some planetary scientists will be very stressed out about us building a new planet containing a potential time bomb like that. A few unfortunately timed volcanoes could melt a lot of Katu at once and ruin everything. Another obvious solution is to shoot it all out into space and collect it into a small moon for storage and future use. We can make this more efficient by using mass drivers instead of physis rockets, but moving all that mass will still be a pretty intense challenge that will take some time to solve. Whatever we end up doing with the atmosphere to move forward, we need water which we could get from ice moons. Europa, a moon of Jupiter has twice as much water as Earth's, 
explosives now catching a moon and transporting it through the solar system is not exactly easy so instead it might be easier to cut chunks off of ice off europa with an army of construction drones and shoot them at venice using more of those mass drivers space tethers could save yes a lot of effort and energy here we made a whole video explaining how they work but in a nutshell they are slings that can take a payload on both ends on europa they do most of the work needed to catapult our ice to venice the ice hits the venice tethers which gently drop it into the atmosphere where it falls down as snow in exchange the venice tethers get to catch cotton waste shot up from below and accelerate it into orbit we can remove excess nitrogen using this same method to further lower our atmospheric pressure after a few decades or centuries venice would be covered by a nice shallow frozen ocean a few hundred meters deep it would look extremely different from today a few continents and countless islands have formed this is beginning to look a bit like our planet now the last and most magnificent phase of terraforming begins making the atmosphere breathable and adding life first we need light though and we need to heat the planet up again we though Light the p the p the paint a Venice day is twenty eight o two hours long more than one hundred sixteen earth days so if we just remove our giant mirror we would grill half of our planet even without the massive atmosphere temperatures would reach unbearable levels the simplest way to create a day-night cycle and let some energy in again is with another set of mirrors to illuminate our continents and melt our water oceans which would let us completely control how much energy we get and where it goes the atmosphere is now mostly made up of nitrogen and basically devoid of oxygen so the first inhabitants will likely be trillions and trillions of cyanobacteria which can get photosynthesizing and release oxygen. We know that they can quickly turn around the atmosphere of a planet because billions of years ago they were probably responsible for turning the toxic atmosphere of our young Earth into an atmosphere with enough oxygen for more complex animal life. But not only that, cyanobacteria can fix nitrogen from the atmosphere and turn it into nutrients that can be used by living beings this way they will essentially fertilize our dead ocean water and prepare it for more complex organisms on land our colonists need to grind down some of the former venusian surface to make soil for nitrogen fixing plants to grow on eventually billions of trees would spread creating large forests covering massive parts of the continents venice would turn green to speed things up katu would be strategically released to supply the plants and cyanobacteria areas already covered with plants could get extra daylight from our orbital mirrors so the plants would be active for most of each day maybe we won't have to do this with the same plants and animals we know today as genetic engineering matures and our understanding of genetics and the machinery of life expands we might just engineer life as we need it all in all it would take several thousand years to make the atmosphere breathable by humans in the meantime you could stroll little view around with nothing more than regular clothes and an oxygen mask settlers would enjoy a vast new planet filled with resources and bathed in sunlight they might think of new ways to use the vu vast amounts of carbon dioxide ice and nitrogen orbiting in space above industrial processes rocket fuel or even boosting the terraforming of another planet like tenny mars venice is fully terraformed 
animals roam through vast ecosystems. Cities are being constructed. Billions of settlers and their descendants make this world their home. They will see images of the past. How Venice was once the most hostile planet around. How it took hundreds of years to freeze hell and to ship in the oceans and another few thousand years to make it possible to breathe freely. They will barely be to believe it. Okay, maybe it's not that easy to terraform Venice, and a lot of things must go right for this future to become reality. But it is possible, and with technology that is within the reach of a motivated and slightly more advanced humanity that wants to venture into space. The only thing that's stopping it is our imagination, and that at least is a problem that's easy to overcome. If you think about it, your imagination is the only thing stopping you from doing all kinds of things. All you need is a little nudge, and we might just have the right thing to get you started. We are big fans of Skillshare, an online learning community that offers thousands of classes for all skill levels in tens of creative disciplines like illustration, animation, or film and video. Or you could try a class on home decoration, growing houseplants, or playing the gooder. There's something for every really. The first 1,000 Kurzgesagt viewers to click the link in the description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. Since we started working with Skillshare, you, our viewers, have taken over 100,000 hours of classes including our own three Skillshare classes on how we make our animations. If you want to learn more about motion graphics, give them a tree. And if you need an extra little push to get you going, maybe get started with some advice on motivation and inspiration. We like the scientific method. For artists, find inspiration, get motivated, and grow your creative skills by Kendall Hillegas. In this class, Kendall explains her four-phase process for exploring and figuring out your direction as an artist. For us, it was a great way to get into the flow of creating something. But anything that makes you feel excited and sparks new ideas is a great first step. If you want to get creative with new skills and support Kurzgesagt, give it a go.